Uh, this morning, I'm sharing devotion. And as you can see, our team is prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. And um, this is taken from Luke chapter 3. And there is, uh, it's also written in, in Isaiah. It's also written in Malachi. Uh, and then there is the cross reference from the, in the Gospels. Matthew 3, Mark 1, John chapter 1. Okay. Uh, let's read the scripture from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip tetrarch of Etoria, and the region of Triconitis, and Lysanias tetrarch of Abilene, while Annas and uh, Capius were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Now, I just want to highlight, now the word of the Lord came to John. And what was John doing? He was preaching a baptism of the repentance for the remission of sin. What is repentance? Okay, now, when we confess our sins, all right, uh, 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 when there is repentance, it is godly sorrow. We agree with God about our sins and we decide not to sin anymore. Okay, when we decide not to sin anymore, we receive pardon, we receive peace. It is important for us to acknowledge our sin, but it is more important, okay? It's not enough to confess and to acknowledge our sin. It is important, godly sorrow, that we will sin no more. Confess what we need to get rid of. Okay? And we prove that we have been repentant when we have turned from that sin, from our sins, and turned to God. We repent. That's what John was preaching. Okay? Next slide. All right? And uh, that was from that... Now we are going on verse 4. As it is written in the book of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Now, Isaiah prophesied this, okay? In Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 5, it is the same uh, what Isaiah prophesied. Now, John the Baptist fulfilled prophecy. He was the one who was crying in the wilderness. He was the forerunner of our Lord. He created a favorable environment for the coming of the Lord. There was 430 years of silence from the prophets, from the book, from Malachi, and then to uh, John. 430 years of silence. And then John came. And John was the one who is the forerunner, who is the voice of one crying. And he says, prepare the way of the Lord. John was declaring this to everybody. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Now, when it says, make his path straight, all this is symbolic. Okay, In those days, in ancient times, how are roads made? Our roads are not fully constructed in those times. When people walk on that same path, the carts go and people walk. That's how the path is made. Okay, And when the king comes, when there is message that the king is coming, what they will do is they will walk along this path. And so the path is prepared in a way uh, by if there are stones or anything and the king is coming, they will just take the stones or whatever that is along the path and they will throw it to the side of the road. Now, when, when uh, Isaiah was saying, and in Luke, it tells us 
uh, this is what is said, uh, make his path straight, okay? It is not just referring to the physical, but it's talking about, all right, and anyone who constructs a road uh, will tell you uh, it is best, if it's possible, make the path straight. But it is also symbolical language, talking about our way of life. Every valley shall be filled. What it means by the valley, okay? When it is low, we try to make it uh, level. When it is high, we bring it down, okay? So that it can be straight, okay? Every valley shall be filled. In our life, they are the low places of life. There are the times where we feel discouraged and there are the times that we feel defeated. We cannot stay in the low times of life always. Don't stay, you know, the scripture tells us, even psalmist, why so downcast, oh my soul? Put your trust in God. So it goes to tell us the valley times, the times that we are down, the times that we feel discouraged and defeated, it needs to be brought up. Every mountain and hill brought low. It is symbolic of our pride. Self-centeredness must be cut down. Humility must be present. Humility must be present in our lives. What are the crooked places? Crooked places shall be made straight and the rough ways move. It talks about our life. What are the crooked places? What are the things that are wrong in our life? The rough ages that are in our life, it must be smoothed. Our de devious ways must be corrected. Okay, we don't stay the same. That's how we prepare the way of the Lord. The language is symbolical. Okay, and then we go on to verse 7 and 9. It says, then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, brood of wipers, he called them, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not begin to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now, the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. When we become a Christian, we need to have fruits of repentance. People need to see the fruits of our repentance or else we will be cut down. When we are cut down, we will not be connected with God and we would not see the glory of God. John was telling them, the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, he says, we don't come to God just to escape judgment. And he was telling all those that were present, the multitudes that they cannot, the Hebrews cannot depend on Abraham and say, oh, just because I am a Hebrew, I am saved. But John is saying, they must be fruits of our repentance. Verses 11, okay? Verse 11, so it says, so the people asked him saying, what shall we do then? He answered and said to them, he who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none. And he who has food, let him do likewise. Then tax collectors who came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed to you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, What shall we do? So he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your, chain, your wages. Now, change must take place for us to enjoy God's fellowship and glory. They must be changed. You know, the people came to John and asked, what shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? John was telling them, there is a change. You have done this before. You shouldn't do again. He's telling them to have love 
for those who do not have, to share with those. It's a message of love. It's a kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is talking about love. Then what shall we do? The tax collectors, you know, the tax collectors used to always collect it more than needed. And so when the tax collector collected more than needed, it was wrong. So John was telling, there must be a change of character. And then he said, those who are what? Soldiers. Do not intimidate anyone. Do not accuse. When you are a soldier, you're part of the army. It is very important that a soldier in the army not to intimidate, not to speak, not to speak bad about others. There must be that team spirit, that unity. So John was saying there must be a change. It's no longer the same. Jesus did not minister to those he was comfortable with, with all, but with all people from the different margins of life. It goes to tell us that we should reach out to people. Okay, we are doing this in Luke chapter three to understand what it means to prepare the way of the Lord. So we go to verse 15 and it says this in verse 15. Now, as the people were in expectation and all reason in their hearts about John, whether he was Christ or not, John answered saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, where whose sandals strap I am not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather the weed into his barns. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So it tells us that when the Lord comes, okay, the Lord will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and it will also be a baptism of fire. Now, when it is fire, it's not just the fire of the Holy Spirit. It is the purifying fire. It purifies evil. And it, when there's talking about fire, it also speaks about the judgment. The Lord is coming in flaming fire to judge. We, when the Lord comes, that was his first. Uh, Jesus came in his uh, came and he, uh, now we are looking forward to prepare the way for the second coming of the Lord. Okay, so we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared in the Lord. We need to come before God and we need to ask God, Lord, what should I do? Okay, so how do we... Uh, that was the background. How do we prepare the way of the Lord? Number one, we need to practice his presence. John was baptizing, 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 sorry, baptizing in Aeonia Salim because there was much water and they came and they were baptized. Being aware of Jesus throughout the day, you know, practice his presence. Now, these people came to John to be baptized. Why did they come to John to be baptized? John was one person who carried the presence of God. Throughout our day, we need to carry the presence of God. We need to be aware of Jesus throughout the day. We need to live every activity of the day with the Lord. We need to share with the Lord, we need to talk with the Lord, we need to experience every day. Some of us, okay, when we go out, we will, as ladies, we will always need to carry our handbag. The guys will always have a wallet in their pocket. I believe the Lord is with us. We don't just carry our handbags, we don't just carry a wallet, but we carry the presence of God in us. Psalms 89 verse 15 says, blessed are those who learn to acclaim you. We shine for the Lord. We carry his presence. And when people come and uh, uh, come across, anybody who come across us, see that we carry the presence of God. And we can only carry the presence of the Lord when we have walked in the light of God's presence. 
That's what we need to do. So that when people speak to us, when people see us, we carry his presence. That's the important thing. We carry his presence. Secondly, we need to pursue Christ-likeness, holiness. That's what John the Baptist did. He was very simple in his dressing and in his diet, but there was Christ-likeness. That's why we read just now, the multitudes came to him. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Now, sin defiles a person. All right? And sin prepares the way for the devil and his demon. But when there is the remission of sin, when there is the pardon of sin, when we are pursuing holiness, pursuing Christ-likeness, it prepares the way of the Lord. Unconfessed sins hinder us from seeing the Lord. Okay? They must be Christ-likeness that must be holiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, we can't see God. No one will see God. If we want to see God, we must deal with the sin that is in our life. Our crooked ways must be made straight. If there is pride, if there is self-centeredness, the high places needs to be brought down. It needs to be cut. Proverbs 28 verses 13, whoever conceals his sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and he renounces them, finds mercy. We need to come to the Lord and we need to tell God, Lord, we want to conform to your ways. We want to become more and more like you so that you can dwell in us. We miss out God's best when there are crooked ways in our heart. So we need to ask God, Lord, help us. Help us to be more Christ-like. Help us to be more holy. Because he's a holy God, we need to be holy. Number three, persevere in victory. Now, for John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. It is important for us, you know, to persevere in the face of public misunderstanding and persecution. Okay, Matthew, you know, they, they make remarks about John, but did John succumb to the valley? Was he down? No, he made his valley. He stood up straight and he stood up strong. Okay, now John's simple life of abstinence, his his clothing and, the, you know, was a rebuke to the lavish, lavishness of his time. What can we say of John? What should be said of us? In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. We need to fight the good fight of faith. We need to persevere. In faith, we need to unceasingly pray. We don't stay down. We stay in the Lord. We stay in victory. The Lord has already won the victory for us. We need to carry that victory, hold on to that victory and declare we are not defeated. We will not stay down. We are up and we are an army moving forward. Number four. How do we prepare for the way of the Lord? Be a prophetic people proclaiming the gospel. Now, John introduced Jesus to the world as the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world. That's what is written here in John chapter 1, verses 35 and 36. You know, Jesus has told us, as John told the people 
Behold the Lamb of God. We need to be prophetic people proclaiming the Lord. Jesus says, go forth and preach the gospel and that we should prophesy. He said that we would be filled with his spirit, but we would first have need for a work to be done in our life, right? Like I said, the crooked places, the rough ages must be made straight. And then we can carry the presence of God. We can be a prophetic people proclaiming the gospel. We need to proclaim the gospel of God. That's the important thing. Why are we still on earth? To proclaim the gospel and to be prophetic. Can I tell you, it's not only for pastors. It's not only for certain people to be prophetic. Every one of us need to prophesy, need to declare that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Lastly, we need to be in a position of readiness for his coming. We need to be vigilant. We need to be alert. We need to be watchful. Luke chapter 12, verse 35 to 40, it says, be dressed ready for service. Keep your lamps burning like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose masters find them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. We'll have him recline at the tam uh, table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose masters find them ready even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the car, of the house had known at what time, what hour the thief was coming, he would not let his house be broken in. You must be ready because the Son of Man will come when you least, when do, you do not expect him. We must be dressed for service. We must be serving the Lord. We must be actively serving the Lord. Whatever God has put into our hands, let's be faithful. Let's serve God and serve other people. That when the Lord comes, he will see us serving. Keep our lamps burning. Let there be oil in our lamps. The parable of the virgin. And then it says what? Let the servants be ready for the master's return. Are we ready? I do not know. Uh, I keep telling myself, I need to be ready. I don't just keep doing. I need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. I remember in my teens, watching the show Raptured for Christ. Raptured for Christ. And I remembered it gave me such a fear. So scared. Because I wasn't ready for the coming of the Lord. But as I grew in the Lord, I recognized we must all be ready for the coming of the Lord. Because he cometh at an hour we do not expect. But he has given us signs. We are all living in the last times. We need to be in a position of readiness. So how do we prepare? Number one, we need to practice his presence. Be in the presence of the Lord more and more. Pursue holiness. Become more and more like Christ. Be a prophetic people. Proclaim the gospel. Proclaim the good news. Give people the good news. Persevere in victory. Yes. The valleys, get out of the valleys. If any one of us is in a valley at this time in our life, get up, get up and be strengthened in the Lord and say, God, I will have victory in the Lord. And lastly, be in a position of readiness for his coming. Amen, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Abby, to just sing the song, 
that he sang earlier on, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Yes, Lord. Amen. Let's be a living sanctuary, prepared, ready for the coming of the Lord. Tell God, Lord, I need you more than ever before. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. If we are down in the dumps, if we are in the pit, we want to come up. The crookedness, if there is deceit, if there is wrong in our life, what do we need to do? We need to make that change, Lord. Help us, give us the strength to be able to make the change so that we will be ready for the coming of the Lord. We prepare the way. Lord, prepare the way for your coming, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Amen. 